here in San Francisco at the third annual convening of the Social Capital Markets, also known as SoCap 11. And this is a real treat because we're here with Bob Batillo, who is an iconoclast, a trailblazer, and a leader in the space can of the social capital. Can you spell that iconoclast? Market. I think I can spell it. I've written it out one or two hey, times. Hey, I'm from the South. You it's know, easier. It very slowly. It's easier than entrepreneur. I still spell that wrong yeah, yeah. all the time. But Bob is the founder of Gray Matters Capital um, and in turn Gray Ghost Ventures, First Light Ventures, is an incredible entrepreneur himself. And today, we're just going to jump in deep. Um, Bob, you know where I'd love to start is you have been notoriously and continue to be a trendsetter. Um, and I'm curious as to what you believe are the trends in the social capital markets, where this is moving, and maybe also where, where the gaps still remain. We see big breakthroughs in ed tech, education technology, in uh, ag tech. We see there's a there's company called Carigo that, that has, it's like a clinic in a box in, in uh, Nairobi. And you would be amazed at the quality of the care that people are getting for a, a 75 cent visit. There's a whole conversation about whether uh, these investments, whether you have to trade off, whether you have to forsake uh, financial return for, uh, for social impact. And I don't believe you do. I don't believe you do. Now, I'm one of the few that think the two actually can reinforce Enhance each other. Right. Mm -hmm. And where, where do you think are the, the biggest gaps in this burgeoning market of social capital? The whole power structure of investment is bass backwards. It really, really is. It, it encourages uh, a whole promotion mentality, an uh, uh, investment dance, you know? And so why would I want to tell you about what I'm really need help with. You know, I want to tell you what I'm super good at, right? So I paint this picture of invincibility yep. to you as, a, as an investor. You buy into that. Yep. It's destined for struggle. Companies are really created. Mm -hmm. They're not born. Absolutely. So you, you have to mm -hmm. uh, go through an iterative process mm -hmm. that, uh, and try stuff, you know? That's where boldness comes from. Yep. And it won't always work. And so you be, have to be able to be agile and change. Absolutely. I, I would really like to be part of spiritualizing capitalism. Financial capital is a tool that can be used to, to benefit mankind, but it does require building on solid relationships, building on care, building on trust, building on your loyalty as an entrepreneur, your imagination, and, and doing this together. Yeah. Recently, I was just thinking about this, that entrepreneurship embedded it, ingrained in it, is this idea of the iterative process of innovation. But when we look at uh, investment, venture capital, we're typically using the same tools we have been for 50 years in terms of the terms. Are, are you starting to see new term sheets develop um, or different ways of placing capital when the exits aren't as clear? I see three uh, opportunities for exit that mm. are a little unusual. Uh, for, for early stage uh, companies. Um, first, um, you are seeing uh, conventional VCs. You're, there are probably 300 solid impact investment funds, uh, by our account, maybe three and a half billion dollars in these funds, and it's, they're a little bit constipated. They're, they're, Waiting yeah, they're for holding the first mover. Funds. Right, yeah. it's not flowing yeah. through. They complain about pipelines. Yeah. Pipelines there. Yeah. So if we can demonstrate mm. a few effective models, That's right. I believe some of that money will come down mm -hmm. and, and start a little earlier, or co-invest a little earlier, or or provide some some capital which can provide some exits. The third is is corporates. That's right. Um, I've been stunned. Uh, we we were involved with a company called Cell Bazaar. They were acquired by Telenor, the yeah. fourth largest yeah. telecom company in the world out of yeah. Norway. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they put it you know, in their annual report. Yeah. A little $5 million acquisition, and you know, I don't know what, how many billions of dollars in, in revenue that they've got, but yeah. this is T90, and they got a full page wow. in their annual report. Wow. This, is, this is absolutely crucial to who this company is. Yeah. And in this way, it's a, it's a grassroots way to, to, um, to move the needle, you know, to move the big uh, stakeholders, the big capitalists, the big pension funds, 
you know, by almost like a, a Trojan horse, <laughs> uh, because if they hold to their word, you know, and grow that little enterprise, they're going to find out, hey, this is good business, and our customers like it, our investors like it. You know, the the nurses that have their pensions with TIA Craft, or the teachers, or the artists, they're happy that we are helping do something good in the world. So um, I am seeing some, some corporate uh, uh, provide some exit money. Now, is this a 20 year or a 10 year or, you know, I'm terrible with timing, yeah. okay? So I may be hanging on to these and nursing right. them along like, you know, when, please, right. you know? That's right. At the same time, it may, it may just happen. It may leave, happen room, leave room for grace, you that's know? Right. That's <laughs> right, this thing might tip a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, Bob, thank you so much. That was really, really a treat. Thank you, Daniel. And uh, you're a good man. I look forward to hanging out with you again real soon.